in the workshop and this one's called Playing With My Stuart 5A Steam Engine. Of course I'm not playing with it, I'm re-engineering part of it. And the part I'm going to play with uh, engineer is the lubricator. Not the one I've just touched, that's the one that lubricates the crosshead, that's just a little hand pump. I mean the great big mechanical lubricator on the left hand side of the engine. But first of all I'll just shut up and let you listen to the engine. This is running at half speed on the video. And here's the video back at normal speed. The engine's not running very fast so you can see what's happening. Look at the lubricator handle on the left. Watch, as it goes over the top everything's fine. And then... Instead of rotating evenly, it's just dithering about in one spot. And if this happens, it means that the cylinder is not receiving lubrication. Without touching it, it starts off again. But I don't really want this, I mean look at it, it just looks stupid wobbling about, it's a non-lubricator. Well I think on, I'll put some oil in the lubricator because that's getting quite low as well. Mechanical lubricators on steam engines can be problematic, it's well known that they're not always the most reliable device out there. But generally speaking, once you get them to work okay, they just carry on working. But this one's not doing its thing at all. In this clip you can see one solution. I've moved the position of the link from the eccentric a bit higher up on the arm on the lubricator. I drilled a total of three holes in this lubricator arm in case I needed to make any adjustments. And these holes are threaded 4BA so that the driving pin, which I know looks like a bolt but it isn't, it has a machine shaft. But the end of this shaft is threaded 4BA, goes through the hole and then I can fasten it in place with a lock nut to stop it from working loose. In this clip I'm removing the driving pin because I need to drill another hole in the arm that drives the lubricator. And in order to do this, I have to remove this small handle. Once I undid the lock nut, it just wound off the shaft. The reason for taking this part off is because I need to remove the arm completely to take it over to the drilling machine. In no time at all, I drilled and threaded another hole in between the two existing holes. So here I've refitted the main driving arm, and let's see what happens. And it's still dithering about a little bit, not as bad as before, but it's still a little bit erratic. I think possibly the ratchet pawl underneath needs a stronger spring, but then if I put a stronger spring on the ratchet pawl, it's going to wear the ratchet and itself more than it would do if it didn't have such a strong spring. Oh, and by the way, the word is pawl, P-A-W-L. I've put the spelling on screen so there can be no confusion. And the position of this ratchet pole is just to the left of the R in ratchet pole. I decided in the end to fit the driving pin in the top hole of the lubricator drive arm. And now the movement is much more consistent. On this type of lubricator the amount of oil that gets pumped out per revolution can be altered by the large nut on the right hand side of the lubricator. So if I find that the lubricator is delivering too much oil I can adjust this nut to control exactly the amount of oil that I need to be delivered to the cylinder with every revolution of the pump. And that's it, I'll just leave the engine running in slow motion till the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.